by choosing one of the games. This was a show called Gantz. It was in the early 2000s. Uh -huh. A really violent show, and I played a really violent character, and he had to say some things that I don't want to ever repeat or think of in my life. Like, really seriously? Do we have to go there? Uh, me, my character and I, uh, my character uh, and his friend were like beating up people with bats and just in the streets and stuff. It's just a horrible, horrible hoodlum guy. And this, this show was just directed and, and, and designed to be for the crowd that just want to play video games and like watch stuff blow up and forth. But it's a bat, bat, bat. That, that was my thing. Mm. I've, uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes you get some stuff, and it's if, it, if it's a particularly violent show, or if it, uh, you know, you, you just try to maybe rewrite something or put it in a way that it's not quite so uh, offensive. But at the same token, it's like that's the show. I mean, that's the line. Yep. You know, that's there's a reason that the writer put it in there, and not the writer, the ad adaptative, the adapting, the, not the American writer that took the translation, but the original person that wrote the show, there's a reason it's in there. You know, it has some sort of, hopefully, contextual importance. And so, um, but sometimes it's, it's tough to, you know, say things. Sometimes it's tough to just see things. You're like, oh my gosh, really? This is where they went with that? It's like, well, that's what it is, you know, so. Um, hopefully it's, it's uh, I mean, I would equate it to something like if you're, if you're in a movie or a TV show or something and it deals with anti-Semitism or racism and stuff like that, you know, you're playing the racist. Your character has to say, yeah. it doesn't mean you believe it, obviously, but it just, that's what that character says. And in order to get the point across, that's what we have to do. And it's, 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 it's difficult sometimes, but you know, you just gotta, that's why we're actors and we, you know, we have to kind of suck it up and do it if we have to. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, piggybacking off of that, so if you're ever involved in a project that you don't really want your name attached to it, is that an option, or are you allowed to use an alias, or? Yeah, you can use, you can use a pseudonym. You can use a pseudonym, yeah, yeah. I've done that maybe once. <laughs> and if somebody does, I just, if you, if you do go on Reddit forums and stuff, don't call that person out. They did that for a reason. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, and they don't owe you to put their name on it. They already put their work on it. It's okay if you know who they are. But don't be like, this is obviously and so offensively this person, and how dare they not put their name on my etchy, and you know, like, you know, just chill out. There's a reason we wanted to do it, but maybe we don't want that to be the first thing that comes up when you look us up on the internet. So just I was, yeah, chill out. I directed a show uh, called Two Love Rue, <laughs> and uh, David Wall directed the first season when he was at Sentai. And it was, you know, crazy little anime about aliens that come down and high schoolers and stuff like that. And I played this kind of bizarre, pervy principal. And uh, then David moved to Dallas, so I was directing. So I, they handed me the show for seasons two and three. And each subsequent season, it just got dirtier and dirtier and dirtier. And I was like, people that were already in the show were like, I'd like to change my name now. <laughs> you know, they know who you are. All right, that's fine. I'll put you down. You know, well, that's fine. But it just got to be so gratuitous. It was so ridiculous. And uh, it just, like, okay, whatever. You know, this is ridiculous. And I, people would come in to record, and I'd be like, hey, how you doing? First of all, let me just say, I'm sorry. <laughs> For what? you're gonna see in <laughs> just a minute. And it was just, you know, and I don't know, I think I could say this for almost every actor in the dubbing world. We hate doing stuff like that. It's just not fun, you know? And I was talking to one of the people at the marketing department, I'm like, why do we do shows like this? And he's like, that's what people wanna buy. And I'm like, no, that's what these people wanna buy, but not these people. And you know, quit marketing to just that little sector. You know, market to a broader audience. You know, and it's very frustrating. But as we all know, anime is such a broad spectrum of content. Hello Kitty, mm -hmm. Hello Kitty. You know, <laughs> and everything in between. No. Did? 
floor. <laughs> okay. Well, I remember you saying I'm sorry to me, but I was like, oh, I voice me, I'm fine. Like, she's, she's the sister, we're good. Yes. Uh, what's been your favorite show to be on or character to be? Gentle and My Hero. Gentle Criminal Rights. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what's he with Meehawk in one piece, you know he only shows up every two years. He goes, hi, I'm a badass, goodbye. That's, that's about it. But no, Jell, Jell is great. He's a very three-dimensional character. I love the writing on the show. I think the backstories are great. I think there's good good lessons underneath. I really enjoy that show a lot. Uh, one of my more recent favorites, because all-time favorites is just impossible. It's too, it's too hard. I can't. Uh, one of my more recent favorites is Chica from Kafi Sama. Love is more. Woo! I I feel like I could voice her forever. Like she's so I don't know. I get to do kind of whatever I want. It's so fun. I love her. I like the idea of recent favorites. When people say like, "Who's your all-time favorite?" I'm like, I can't really compare. The characters are very different. It's hard to like choose between them because um, they're on such a broad spectrum of characters. Um, but mo I think I have a lot of fun with Rimuru, and that's why that reincarnated as mine. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like that too. I, it's hard to pick. I mean, I love Lord Death, and I love Undertaker, and I love All for One, and but I, really, I think my favorite uh, is a character named Kumatetsu from a movie called The Boy and the Beast. Oh. And um, it, it means I, I, I think it's because. Uh, it's a beautiful movie. Um, it's got an exceptionally good cast. Uh, Mike McFarlane directed it, did a great job. And it's just, a, it's a great, if you haven't seen it, I'd highly recommend it. It's by Momura Hosada, who did Summer Wars and Wolf Children and um, other stuff. But it, it's just, he's like, he and Miyazaki are like the Spielberg of anime, you know? <laughs> just, it's just so good. And really what, really what, uh, I, I loved about it the most is, um, and I know you guys have heard this, so forgive my redundancy, but if I may, um, one day I walked into my son's room and he's watching some on his phone. I said, what are you looking at? He goes, anime. I said, good, what are you watching? He goes, Soul Eater. I said, oh, cool, you know, your old man plays Lord Death. And he goes, yeah, I'm watching the Japanese version. <laughs> so I told him to get out. <laughs> And he said, but this is my room. And I said, no, get out of my house. <laughs> so conversely, um, we go to the movie theater to see a screening of The Boy and the Beast because it had a small theatrical run and they were trying to get it submitted for, uh, not the English version, but the movie itself submitted the Academy Awards for animation. And so it had to have a small theatrical run to qualify. So I took the family to the movie theater and we sat there and there's a crowd about like this and uh, the movie ends and we all get up and we exit the doors. And as we exit the doors, my little girl who was nine years old, holding my hand, looks up to me, uncued, uh, I mean, just out of the blue, goes, Daddy, you were awesome as the voice of the beast. And everyone's like, what? You're John Swayze? And I was like, yes. They're like, oh my God, oh, that's so cool. We live in the crowd around wanting autographs and pictures. And I'm just in heaven, you know, this is so cool. And I looked at my son. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was, it was just such a wonderful movie to be a part of, and I was just blessed to do it. Well, you know what he likes watching, like watching the Japanese version of it? Because I hear that the actor goes, Lord, yeah. <laughs> you guys have a thought question? Yeah. How did you get into the dubbing business? How did we get into the dubbing business? <laughs> uh, I, I just, um, I was an actor. I mean, all of us have been actors. You know, if you want to get into this, start out as an actor. Don't want to be a voice actor. Just be an actor. Mm. But I was doing film and television and commercials and stuff and somebody, and I was doing a comedy show and this guy named Jason Lee said, uh, he was our opening act and he goes, hey, you ought to do anime. And I was like, what's anime? This is 1997. He goes, what's well, Japanese animation? I'm like, well, I don't speak Japanese. <laughs> but anyway, there was this company in Houston called ADV Films and um, I went and auditioned and, and uh, uh, got cast in a show called Golden Boy, which was my very first show. And um, 
uh, you know, just kind of, too, I did, for the first year or two, I, I didn't even know what anime was. I still didn't know what it was, you know, like, I just, I just, why does everyone have pointy blue hair? I don't understand, this is weird. And it was just another gig for me, and it wasn't until uh, a couple years later that the studio really started to grow. They started adding studios with, you know, recording studios in the building, and it became a huge thing. I was like, oh my gosh, and then, you know, I started reading up on it, and ADV was the number one distributor in North America for anime, and then Funimation opened up, and it was like, oh my gosh, this thing is just you know, unbelievable. And uh, of course, here we are today, um, you know, so, but that's how I got started. It has completely enveloped my life professionally. I don't do film anymore, I don't have time for it, so. Um, but I'm, I'm very grateful and very thankful. Um, and you know, this is, it's a wonderful thing to get wrapped up into, so. I uh, was doing a stage version of the Rocky Horror Show, and I was a pianist, um, and it was a swing cast, and uh, so it was directed by the late Christopher Ayers. Um, it was uh, Christopher Ayers, uh, Christopher Patton, Greg Ayers, all switching off, playing Riff Raff, um, and Frank Furter. Uh, Monica Real was Eddie and Dr. Spot. Um, and uh, I came in to play Janet, and Mariela Ortiz was in it. A lot of folks that were from and working currently at ADB Films. Uh, Matt Greenfield, one of the founders of ADB Films, came to see it um, with his ex-wife, Tiffany Grant. Yeah. Sorry, last time I said late wife, I'd be like, no, no, she's not dead. And I was like, sorry, my bad. Ex-wife, Tiffany Grant, she's like, a, she was the lead in Evangelion. Um, and uh, came to see it, and after the show, you know, in the lobby when you meet folks, um, Matt came up to me and was like, hey, I want you to come into ADV. And I was like, oh, cool, am I gonna sing? And he was like, no. And that was it. Uh, and then I went in and, um, yeah, it was bit parts for camp. And he was like, well, this character is getting stabbed to death. I guess we'll see if he can do this as a career. As he does, just to terrify you right before an audition. Um, and then I screamed and he liked it. And um, after that, kind of, it just passes uh, from, studio to studio, like, hey, I got this girl, she can, you know, do bit parts for you. Um, so you start off, you do like a bunch of uh, little girl characters, and then I've got like Rhea and Detective Loki Ragnarok, and um, it, Sister Anna and Chrono Crusade, and then my uh, first uh, supporting role was um, uh, Gilgamesh, and it was Foucault, and then um, my first lead role was Alva in GK Extend, which John Swayze cast me in. Um, and uh, yeah, and the ball just rolled from there. I didn't get an audition, at Primation, I was on a waiting list for two years to get in there um, as a working actor in anime dubs. Wow. Um, and then uh, my first thing there was simultaneously My Santa and uh, Save Me Lollipop. I've been a stage actor my whole life. I was a stage actor as a kid and in school, and I studied theater in New York, and, and then I, I switched gears and went to film school. But I've always been doing voices as part of my acting, so I did commercials at home, and, and, and I, um, just like John, I auditioned along with just about every other Houston voice actor or, or actor, stage actor, who saw the open call auditions every couple of months for uh, ADV films. They don't do that anymore, but they had them because they needed a big, they needed to get talent. They had all these licensing for him, they didn't have any actors. So we all just went in like we were auditioning for commercials right in the studios. So I got in Bubblegum Crisis 2040 uh, in the late 90s, and that was my first big, oh, Nigel. <laughs> Did you play Mason in that show? No, it's Nigel, uh, yes. Nigel Kirkland. Like Mason. Mason, I forgot. We have to look it up. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and then I met Mike McFarlane. I heard about Funimation, and I wanted to start working with them. So I talked. I met Mike McFarlane, talked to him, and sent. I'm a video editor because after UT Film School, I love video editing. I do a lot of corporate videos and commercials, and I so I cut together a demo reel of my stuff from ADV and sent it to Mike McFarlane, and he cast me based on that. He said, "You want to come up here, drive to Fort Worth, and start recording at Funimation?" I was like, "Hell yeah!" So I started recording in both studios, and then got one piece and different stuff like that. So that that became uh, that that's how I got started. In. Yeah, I grew up and I always wanted to be a singer, and so I have a very musical background. Uh, it wasn't until around I think middle school that I wanted to start trying to do like plays and theater. And so then once I was doing that, I was obsessed with doing plays and theater, but I was still pursued a, a career in singing and music. And that's uh, what I got my 
degree in and uh, I was lucky enough to live in Dallas where um, the studio is located for Funimation and I kind of similarly to, to Brittany was doing a show with some folks who it was all kind of a networking situation where they needed a bunch of people a bunch of new female talent to audition for this show called Sasami's Magical Girls Club and Leah Clark was directing it and uh, I auditioned and it involved singing in the audition. She was looking for singers specifically and I got something very, very tiny, like a bit role in that. And then the second season I got like a, a, a named role and then she passed me off to Tyler Walker who used me for some bit things and who eventually passed me in my first kind of big supporting role in Ghost Hunt as Masako Hara. And yeah, just from then on, just kept working and much like John, it's like my whole existence now. I still try and do theater when I can because I really miss it. I love doing live theater. It's just one of the best feelings and yeah. one of the, my most favorite things to do in the world. So, but, uh, and now uh, I've been voice acting for about 15 years and I've been uh, directing for about five years now. I think we got, I think, is there a panel in here at, at 145? Because if uh, so, we got to wrap it up. We call it at 145. Oh, so. call it at 145. We got, we got about four minutes. Yes, again. Go ahead. <laughs> um, when did you realize that your voice was No, because it's the last one in this room. Oh, okay. We're the last one. Oh, yeah, I got to When did we, what? I'm sorry. When did you guys realize that your voices were actually really famous? Like, did it, like, did a <laughs> man come up to you and be like, oh my God, like, you're uh, famous? Yes. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I ever noticed that one. I'd like to. Um, I was at a, a store with my wife, and uh, no, well, this happened a couple of times. Um, I, but I was at a store with my wife, um, and it's called At Home. It's a big box store. And we were buying some accessories for our uh, house. And um, we're checking out, and my wife looks at the cashier guy, he goes, you like anime? And I was like, oh. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And I said, Dina. And she goes, now look, look at it. He had a lot of lanyard on like this, you know. And it had a bunch of anime characters. And I said, oh, I see what you mean. What's your favorite show? Uh, One Piece. John, who do you play in One Piece? And I was like, uh, Crocodile. And he went, no way! <laughs> You like my hero academia? I'm like, Dina, please. And she's like, Yeah. And they go, I play all for one. And he's like, Oh my God. Oh. And he had a little radio and he's like, Assistance at register two, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave, you know, we did a little picture and I signed his badge and stuff. And uh, he rang our thing up. And I was watching it, went, Total $200. And they looked at me and my wife and went, 175. Oh, baby. And we got the employee discount. <laughs> Famous person discount. I take that back, actually. I was at my dentist getting my teeth cleaned. <laughs> and, and I told him what I did for a living. And she said, oh, you want to tell so-and-so. This, this really, like, regal, just stoic dentist who works there. He's down the hall. I think you need a problem. I think you need a root canal. Oh, okay, I'll get back to you soon. Hey, this guy's your voice actor. You play so and so in my hero academia. <laughs> 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 you don't want your dentist freaking out with No, you sure don't. No. What do you do? <laughs> I will tell you, though, a long, long time ago, uh, a friend of mine called me up and said, Hey, man, listen, uh, my daughter is a big fan of anime, and she really freaked out when she found out that I know you. Would you be willing to talk to her? And I said, Sure. And she got on the phone. She's like, hello? I said, hi, this is John Swayze. How are you? And she goes, fine. And I was like, um, do you have any questions for me? And she went, yes. Um, do you know Vic Mignogna? And I said, yeah, yeah, I do. He lives here in town. We work together. I have another question. Yeah, what is that? Could you get me his autograph? <laughs> And I said, probably. Um, I tell you what, I'll do. Uh, I'll get his autograph and I'll uh, sign a print for you and I'll mail it to you. How would you like that? She went, oh, no, 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 that's too much trouble. I just need his. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Yeah. So I did it. <laughs> I got it. And I met 